Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the review and recap series for Living Under Nazi Rule as part of the OCR History B scheme of work. We are continuing with our revision on the theme 5 which is the occupation of um, Europe between 1939 and 1945. In the previous video we looked at a case study of Poland to better understand what the Nazi occupation of Eastern Europe was like and we came to the conclusion that the occupation of Eastern Europe was extremely brutal because the Nazis perceived the people of Eastern Europe to be racially inferior. Today we are going to contrast the occupation of Poland with the occupation of the Netherlands which is in Western Europe to better understand why the Nazis uh, treated people of Western European descent different uh, when they invaded their lands. So in May 1940 the Nazis invade the Netherlands. Here is a map of what uh, Germany uh, sort of looks like um, at this time. In the previous video, we talked about how the Nazis had invaded the uh, Czech part of Czechoslovakia here, the small sort of shaded bit. Now they have also invaded Poland and they have renamed Poland uh, the general government and they've split it up into different areas. So by this point, the Nazis have began to occupy different parts of Europe. They now have uh, the Netherlands in their sights and you can see uh, in the green sort of outline there, uh, the Netherlands to the west of Germany, the sort of northwest of Germany, just uh, to, the, to the left of it on the map. The Nazis begin their occupation of the Netherlands um, in a bit of a different, well, in a very different way, sorry, to their uh, occupation of Poland. That is because in the eyes of the Nazis, they consider these people to be racially equal to them. They consider the people of the Netherlands to be um, Uber mentioned, just like themselves, they consider them to be Aryan, so they treat them as equals. This is shown in the fact that the Dutch civil servants, so people working for governments and local governments, are allowed to keep their jobs. In Poland, don't forget, 30,000 of the most talented leaders in uh, Poland are arrested and sent to different camps. In the Netherlands, though, they're allowed to keep their jobs, although 30% of mayors did step down when the Nazis invaded because they did not want to collaborate with the Nazi government that was ruling over them. Education was also untouched. Teachers and the education system were allowed uh, to remain intact because the Nazis did not want to cause any reason for the Dutch people to rebel. In Poland, don't forget, the Nazis systematically destroy Polish education because they do not want these people to have any power. There was even a Dutch brigade of SS soldiers. There are posters encouraging Dutch men to join the Waffen SS, which was an elite group of Aryan soldiers in the Nazi government. They wanted Dutch men to join the SS because they considered them racially equal to the German uh, SS soldiers. And in June 1940, um, the Dutch people wear a little white carnation, a white flower, to support the exiled Dutch royal family and the Nazi forces who are occupying Europe leave them alone. That act of passive resistance goes unpunished, which shows us that the Nazis consider these people in a different light to the people of Poland and Eastern Europe. They're allowed to passively resist at the start without much in the way of a punishment. So it's a very different kind of occupation and it's largely due to the fact that the Nazis consider these people as racial equals. However, just because they consider them as racially equal, that does not mean that the Nazis will tolerate any acts of resistance. And after 1940, um, the situation in the Netherlands starts to change a little bit. In February 1941, uh, 425 Jewish men are rounded up for deportation to uh, different camps either in Germany or across Eastern Europe. Now originally the Dutch civil servants had filled out census forms and uh, family forms to identify Jewish people and families within the Dutch communities and they'd done this willingly. They'd collaborated with the, the Nazi forces at the start. However, when the Nazis start to round up these Jewish men for deportation, the Dutch communists call for a strike. They realise that they need to take action to stop this happening. So they call for a strike and trams across the country are halted and strikers march down the streets of Dutch towns as a way of visibly resisting the Nazi rule. 
As a result, the German army act forcibly and they punish those uh, strikers. Nine of them are shot dead and hundreds of them are arrested. And this is a real turning point in the Dutch occupation uh, of the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands. No longer are the Nazis going to treat them um, in a more favourable light because they are now starting to resist Nazi rule. On the 13th of March 1941, the first death sentence against a Dutch person has issued. So the tide has started to turn, and now that the Dutch people are starting to resist Nazi rule, they are, just like the Polish people, beginning to be rounded up and executed as a result. However, it's really important to distinguish still, the Polish people are rounded up on a much larger scale and punished on a much larger, larger scale because of their ethnic background. But once the Dutch start to resist Nazi rule, they are likewise punished as well. Three strikers and 15 members of the Dutch resistance were also shot as well. Okay, So again, once they start to resist, they are punished for it. The Nazis then start to switch. Instead of trying to win the Dutch people over by allowing them to keep their education and their jobs and encouraging them to join the SS, they now start to switch to intimidation and violence to keep the Dutch people in line. In April 1942, all Dutch Jewish people have to wear a Star of David as a sign of identification. In 1943, the Nazis deport Jewish people to extermination camps across Eastern Europe. 107,000 Jewish Dutch people are deported. That's 76% of all Dutch Jewish people. So, just like in Poland, Jewish people in the Netherlands face a similar fate. Okay, It didn't matter the fact that these Jewish people were Dutch. In the eyes of the Nazis, they were still considered inferior. So they were treated in the same way as a Jewish person would be in Poland. Okay? So there are some similarities between the occupation of Eastern and Western Europe. Dutch men were also used as forced labour, just like Polish men were, to replace German soldiers that had been called up to the front line. By 1944, all Dutch men aged 16 to 60 had to report to the Nazi authorities to serve as labour forces in Germany. One third, so 500,000 of all of the eligible men between age 16 and 60 actually went and the rest go into hiding. 300,000 men uh, and some more go into hiding and they begin to publish leaflets, basically uh, condemning the Nazi rule. Dutch resistance is starting to grow at this point. Once they start to deport Jewish people en masse and once they start to call them up for labor, that's when Dutch resistance really starts to grow. And they help hide 300,000 men. 20,000 Dutch resistance members are arrested and they're sent to four different Dutch concentration camps. So again, the Nazis are coming down extremely hard on these acts of resistance. Living conditions continue to worsen in the Netherlands throughout the 1943 period and in winter 1944, the uh, Dutch government calls a strike to try and um, disrupt Nazi rule, but it sees 20,000 Dutch people starve. They realise that the Nazis are going to have to leave the Netherlands soon because the, the tide of the war has turned against the Dutch uh, against the Nazi uh, government. So the Dutch people, sensing an opportunity, call for a strike, but it leads to mass starvation of Dutch people as well. So that leads to then, in May 1945, the Netherlands being liberated by Allied forces. So there are lots of differences in the way that the Nazis um, treat people of uh, Western Europe when they occupy them. That's largely based on the fact that uh, they are considered racially equal because they are considered Aryan, and this is shown in lots of different factors, mainly the fact that they don't dismantle the Netherlands in the same way that they do with Poland. But as soon as the Dutch people start to resist Nazi rule, they are treated very similarly to the Polish people in the fact that they are rounded up, sent to camps, and they are executed as well. So the Nazis will not tolerate any acts of resistance from anybody. As ever then, there are a series of uh, knowledge questions that I would like you to test yourself on. I'm going to flash them up on the screen uh, in a second. I would like to pause the video and then I would like to have a go at them before having a look at the answers. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode. And the answers are about to appear on the screen now.